So today we're going to talk about graphs. We're going to talk about how to move the lines on our graphs, what causes those shifts. So we're going to talk about supply, demand, and then later we'll move on to the production possibility frontier for macroeconomics. So take a look at these four examples. We have supply increasing, demand increasing, and then demand decreasing and supply decreasing. Try and draw these four graphs by yourself. Remember that if the price changes, the lines do not shift. The lines won't move. If the price changes, we'll move along the line. So go ahead and pause the YouTube video now and try and finish these four graphs for me. Pause. All right, hopefully you finished. If not, let's go over the answers. Supply increases. When supply increases, it's going to shift down to the right. From S1 to S2. From P1 to P2. What are some things that will increase my supply? We could lower our cost of inputs, lower our cost of materials, lower our tax, lower our uh, cost of labor. Yeah, these things can increase our supply. So a decrease. Uh, another thing that could increase our supply is an increase in government subsidy if the government pays us more money. Yeah, a decrease in tax. These are some of the things that can shift our demand. What about what can decrease our supply, which will raise price? from P1 to P2. So the opposite. So an increase in our costs, an increase in tax, or a decrease in government subsidies. Shifting demand. So an increase in demand is going to shift us to the right or up. What are some things that will increase demand? We could have an increase in advertising. Or we could have some change in culture or trend. Another thing that can cause our demand to shift outward to the right, if a substitute, the price of a substitute goes up. Or if the price of a complement goes down. Okay. So just a quick review. An example of a substitute. What might be uh, Coke and water. A complement are two things you buy together like hot dogs and hot dog, the bread for the hot dog, hot dog buns. Yeah. Or peanut butter and bread. Yeah. Those are compliments. Shifting my demand, a decrease, will cause my demand curve to go down or to the left which will give me a new lower price. Some new bad information can cause a decrease in demand. If it's a report comes out saying that, oh, this product may cause cancer, it may shift our demand. Or a new technology comes along to re that may uh, disrupt this product or service. The next part we're going to talk about are the production, possibility, curves, or frontier. On these graphs, we usually have two goods. 
we'll have two goods. So we'll have a good Y and a good X. Maybe this is uh, apples and this is rice. What this says is if you spend all of your resources, you can make this much rice, but zero apples. Or if you spend all of your resources on making apples, you'd be able to make this many apples, but zero rice. Or you can make some combination of the two goods. If you're here at the X, this X dot is unattainable. Okay? It's not possible at current levels okay? for your economy to produce at level X. Okay? If you're at the blue X, this is attainable but inefficient. Okay? You could be producing more. So it's saying you're producing this much and this much of the two goods. So you could be doing better. So this is inefficient. And then the red X is attainable and efficient. You're maximizing your resources to produce the most amount. What are some things that can shift our production possibility frontier? So I could go from this curve out. Okay. We could increase. So now I can produce more of both goods. Something we can, that can shift both things might be an increase in labor okay. or labor productivity. We have more workers or our workers are working harder. New technology comes along that helps us produce more of both goods. What's something that could only shift one good but not the other? So if this is apples and that's rice, this might be a technology specific just to apple farmers, a new fertilizer that only benefits apple farmers. It won't benefit the rice farmer. And so that could be technology specific. We could go the other way if I just wanted to increase maybe the invention of a new uh, machine for collecting rice, processing rice. Okay. We could also have our economy, production possibility frontier, come inward. Okay. So here now I have K for capital. This would be building machines, okay. investments in business. And labor. This is my population. These are my workers. So I could have some inward movement. So what would cause this? Maybe disease. So disease comes along and kills off some of my working population, but my machines and buildings and factories are still there. Or something that doesn't affect my labor, but will affect my capital. Maybe a hurricane or a flood uh, that we knew was coming. So the workers were able to move out of the way from the flood waters to safety. But the machines and buildings are still there and they become damaged and ruined from the flood. And then lastly, we could decrease both our capital and our labor. And that might be something like an earthquake comes along and destroys our buildings, our factories, and our labor force. And so earthquakes. 
So this is our production possibility frontier. It represents uh, what our economy can do, produce that. And we looked at shifting it inward and outward. And then again, we looked at just a normal supply and demand for our micro skills. So that, that's our graphs, and that's how we shift our lines.